honestly, from the viewfinder, everything's looking a little funky. Hey y'all, it's Peril Yellow here and I'm back with another video. Today, we're gonna be doing a documentary and it's called Dear Zachary, A Letter to a Son About His Father. And when I tell you, it is an emotional plunge. It's not even a roller coaster. You're just, you're, you're fucking mad the whole time. So, let's get right into it. In the beginning, it's really lighthearted, okay? It's obviously, we know we're walking into a documentary about someone who has passed on. Uh, in the beginning, they described the person as, you know, loving, supportive, goofy, never wore pants, and every best friend he's ever had basically wanted him to be the best man at their wedding. But then, there's this instant shift, and you know, you can see the sadness and the pain that everyone is feeling in the moment. The grandparents in particular, who play a big role in this story, and it's, it's really kind of sad. Andrew Bagby had been in a relationship with one of his good friends, Heather, and during this time, you know, everyone thought that they would be together forever. They were the eternal couple, you know, they were just the best for each other. But unfortunately, that's not how life would have it. Andrew wanted to go to med school, and Heather had other plans for her life, so they decided to break up. Now this breakup was pretty detrimental to Andrew because he wasn't the most conventionally attractive guy and he had a pretty self-deprecating attitude. You can tell that his self-esteem wasn't too great. And this is how he met Shirley Turner. Yuck. Now Shirley was described by their friends as kind of inappropriate. She would talk about their sex lives even though they had just met her. She would be clingy around Andrew and she was 12 years older than him. Yeah, not to mention she had three kids. Now Shirley wasn't really involved in her children's life because as she said, children were more trouble than they were worth. Okay, now the two met in med school and uh, around this time, they had both graduated and Andrew was struggling because he, during his residency, he wanted to be a surgeon, but he really felt that he didn't fit in there and eventually he transitioned to family medicine, which he loved and he thrived and everyone loved him. It was a beautiful time. Shirley, however, didn't do anything. She, this was said by uh, Andrew's colleague, Clark, that though she graduated from med school, she didn't practice. You would think someone who spent so much time and money and energy and effort into graduating med school would become a doctor, but not Shirley. Andrew was kind of done with Shirley at this point. He was ready to get rid of her, and she knew this. She wasted no time showing her psycho tendencies, calling him 30 times a day, showing up to his house in the middle of the night and knocking on the door, kicked the psycho into turbo. Whoa there, buddy! You wanna see some real speed? His colleague, Clark, was informed of Shirley's behavior. And you know, he was a reasonable guy. He was like, clearly you need to kick her to the curb. She's insane, don't, don't meet her, don't talk to her anymore. Ignore her, which he should have. But as life would have it, Andrew decided, okay, I'm gonna meet up with her, tell her to stay away from him, you know, kind of clear the water with her, lay everything down on the table, and then be done with her from there forward. He told Clark about this, and this was also the night that he said he was gonna meet up with Clark for drinks. So when he didn't show up, something was wrong. Clark knew something was off because, as he said, Andrew was never late. November 5th, 2001, Andrew Bagby was pronounced dead. It was determined that he had been shot five times in the face, the chest, the buttocks, <laughs> that's not funny, the back of the head, and it was also determined that he was struck with a blunt object in the back of the head. After this was announced, Clark told the police that they didn't really have to look far because it was pretty obvious that it was Shirley, right? So, investigators take this claim seriously, you know. At the memorial service, it was said that Shirley was kind of carrying on, being like super extra and crying as if they've been together for years when in fact they hadn't been together that long, so it was kind of weird. Like crying way too hard for the situation, if that makes sense. Honestly, to everyone, it seemed pretty disingenuous. And at some point, 
during the fe the memorial, she went up to Heather and decided to go on this long ass rant berating her and telling her that her and Andrew's love was nothing compared to Shirley and Andrew's love and that they're gonna meet again in heaven. Okay, whatever. And you know, that their love meant nothing. Read the room, like, is that the time? And like, what was the point? What was the point of all that? Make it make sense, sis. Not only did she decide to just give Heather hell for absolutely no reason, she later goes on to email. Email Heather, take the time to find her email address, type out this long ass email, basically saying the same things over and over, just berating her, calling her nothing, calling her worthless, telling her that her love and Andrew's love was nothing. Honestly, I probably would have fought her at the funeral. Wait, 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 wait. During the investigation, they found out that Shirley literally just days before her supposed meeting with Andrew, she bought a gun and took lessons on how to use it. Don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Oh, don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. Like what, what the hell, sis? Like what the fuck? That's not obvious. And when officers questioned her about her whereabouts the night of Andrew's murder, she said that she was home Sick. She said that she was in her bed, sick, couldn't move. You lying ass bitch. Which was obviously a fucking lie. When they asked where the gun was, she said, oh, you know, I lost it. I, maybe it's in my car or my closet or somewhere. And then she tried to change her story. It's like, oh, I gave it to Andrew and it's in his trunk. We thought you didn't, we thought you weren't meeting up with him, sis. So when did you change that? but you were homesick. And also, when they looked up her phone records, they showed her pinging all the way from Pennsylvania to Iowa. You're caught, sis. Clearly it was a long drive. She needed company. She needed to talk to somebody. So right there, it was proven that she wasn't homesick the night of his death. But while investigators were looking this up, she flew her ass back to her home in Canada. So now, crazy is out of the jurisdiction and basically the states have to you know, put in all this paperwork and do all this extra to get her ass out of Canada to get her back into custody of the US. You know, Andrew's parents even tried to lure her back into town by saying um, to come for the funeral. And for somebody who was so distraught during the memorial, you would think that they would go to the funeral, correct? No. It was just too much for her. She couldn't do it. She was finally charged in Canada December 12, 2001. And her bail was set for about $70,000. But her psychiatrist decided to put up $65,000 and she made it out on bail. And she signed some paper basically saying she won't flee the country. Even though she already fled the country that she's being accused of murder for. make it make sense. And to make matters worse, she was pregnant with Andrew's child. And with the announcement of Andrew's child, uh, the director, who was Andrew's best friend, Kurt, decided, you know, this documentary has a whole new purpose. So now Kurt had a whole new motivation to make this documentary. Now this is gonna be a letter to his child about the person that Andrew was, you know, because Unfortunately, he wouldn't be there to see his child. Andrew's parents, Kate and David, decided to move to Canada because they weren't gonna do everything on their part to try and get their grandchild away from the person that killed their son. In doing this, they basically became a really important part of the community. Everybody loved them, everybody knew them. Kate and David were just like household names in that small town. They became friends with a lot of people in the justice system because of what they were working so hard to do. They became members of the church. You know, everyone loved them and everyone just wanted to be loved by them, which is beautiful. In July of 2002, Zachary Turner was born and everyone loved him. They didn't know him, but they loved him. Yeah, at first, Shirley didn't want Kate and David to see their grandchild 
and she made them out to be criminals and crazy and wanted them to stay away from her and her child. It wasn't until a month later that she would allow them visitation, but it had to be monitored. It was only an hour long and when they got there, they had to be frisked down. And honestly, Kate didn't care. Kate didn't care at all. She was so happy to be there. She basically said that, you know, she stripped down naked just to hurry up the process so she can see her grandchild. I want a chance at him! Shirley ended up being arrested again. While she was in prison, she decided to give custody to Kate and David. Because she gave them custody, they had to abide by a certain set of rules, which required them to receive an hour-long phone call from Shirley every day. And Shirley loved to play, you know, good guy, victim. Almost amazing to me how well you guys are taking care of them the way I would be taking care of them. Even Randy Pierce, he was like, Shirley, are you sure you can trust these people? And I said, yes. I and just being the most conniving, she always knew when to play cute. It wasn't cute. Not only that, but Andrew's parents actually decided to take initiative and drive two hours every week to visit Shirley, to take Zachary to visit his mother. Couldn't be me. Shirley ends up making bail again during her trial while they were trying to get her back into the fucking U.S. Not to say that the U.S. has a great legal system or anything, but like, just send her ass back. Like, she's a murderer. No way around it. So this judge that ha comes about, Judge Gail Welch or whatever, decides to be the biggest dumbass and was only referring to fucking Shirley as Dr. Turner, Dr. Turner, oh, you're so capable, Dr. Turner, oh, you, you can go, doctor, you're a doctor. You know, not to mention that if they had just fucking looked, the bitch was on suicide watch every 15 minutes and she threatened to stab an inmate with a fork. She was causing all types of mishap and trouble and an ex-boyfriend even came forward and said that she threatened to kill him to end his life. And they still let her ass out and gave her Zachary back. They gave her full custody of Zachary. So now the grandparents are really still trying to fight like, what the fuck, like what are you doing? Give us Zachary, like, it, what are you doing? I know. Judge Gale, Dr. Turner, doctor. Oh, doctor, you can have, you know, take your, take your baby, doctor. You pinky promise that you won't leave? Okay, good enough for me. Head ass. Oh, and I didn't even mention that she had fucking eight restraining orders on her. Eight different people had restraining orders on fucking Shirley. And you're like, you know what? Nah. She's a functioning member of society. Okay. There is no indication of a psychological disorder that would give concern about potential harm to the public general as her, her crime, crime, while violent, violent, was specific in nature. Yes, bitch, it was specific. She specifically got a gun and went to Andrew's house to shoot him. <laughs> like, what? what? What is so difficult about that? I don't, I'm not understanding. I don't understand. This led to the grandparents spending an absurd amount of time with that woman. Too much time with that girl. Oh my goodness, they would go to the mall together. They would go shopping. They would go, they would go everywhere. I mean, obviously they only did it because they wanted to be around Zachary, but can you imagine have it having, having to spend so much time with this girl you hate who's annoying as fuck, not just a murderer, but she's annoying as fuck. And you have to go out because you're trying to get your grandson because she's a murderer. She murdered your son, your child. Yikes. What's the term for it? Cut and dry? This case should be cut and dry, no? Am I using that right? Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. So Shirley decided to throw a uh, Zachary's first birthday party at a uh, McDonald's, right? That um, when they were opening presents, presents. <laughs> when they were opening presents, Zachary was a little, getting a little fussy. You know, he didn't want to be in her mom, his mom's lap no more. It happens, so he's a child. So Zachary ends up going into the arms of his grandmother, and whoo boy, Shirley just couldn't take that. That was like the final strike to her self-esteem clearly while the grandmother was swaddling and loving the child as people do she was referring to Zachary you know as my baby my baby because she's a grandparent you know grandparents 
my baby, my my child, like. And later, crazy decides to call Kate and be like, I heard what you said to Zachary. You were like um, my baby, and she was like, Yeah, I was like my baby. What's the problem? Shirley is like, that's not your child. He's my child. Why would you say that? You know how I feel. Why would you say that? I'm going on and on about absolutely nothing. All the most bullshit. But Kate's like, all right, whatever. I don't care, whatever. Just, not I don't care, but she was like, whatever, Shirley. And mind you, there's like so many video clips in this documentary of freaking Zachary choosing Kate over his own mother. Like, they'll sit on either side of him have someone hold him and then he'll choose who he goes to and guess who he went to every fucking time his grandmother his grandmother honestly that should have been all the video proof they had to bring into court but no not for gail no gail and i want to mention that i did say she has three kids already right three children that she had just been neglecting not caring for not done anything for but all of a sudden don't say that to him that's my child hey yay yay hi caramba hi key the grandparents should have hired somebody to jump her like they should have just kept hiring people to jump her and then been like <laughs> and then been like she can't she she's always getting into fights there's no way she can take care of this baby i mean and you say it was a nice thing to do i just said they should have did it honestly it's wild it's all very very wild August 18th, 2003, Shirley and Zachary went missing. You know, initially everyone believed that Shirley just, she was a flight risk in general. Like, everyone was just hoping and praying that she just ran off somewhere. And now there was a hunt to find her again. Two bodies were discovered, one of a child and one of an adult female. Kate and David had been called in to identify the bodies and it was determined that it was Shirley and Zachary. This just destroyed them. It, it crushed them to the max. It was said that Kate was so disoriented that you know, her legs gave out and she collapsed. They had to have a few people grab David and drag him outside because he'd been cursing and screaming and going on, which is understandable. It, truly is and it's really sad that Shirley not only took the life of their son but their grandson so it turns out that there was a new man Shirley was dating and an ex of hers came forward and told the new guy that she had attempted suicide on his porch and also threatened to kill him so immediately the new guy was like yeah you know it's time to time to ditch her she's got to go she's clearly a psychopath and because he broke up with her she decided that she was gonna frame him for this somehow. I don't know how this worked in her head, but she decided to go to his house, leave a bloody tampon on his door, and pictures of her and Zachary on his porch, and she jumped off the cliff that was behind his house into the ocean. I mean, on one hand, like, it's not really a bright side, but she gave Zachary an Ativan, so as to put him to sleep before she did this, and I believe she gave herself one as well before she jumped, and then she jumped. <laughs> Man, I just wanna say, this is so fucked up. Especially the situations with the judges, just letting her out continuously. The negligence in this case is outstanding. The simple things that they could have done, like just hand her back over to the US, one, and this would have been cut, cut and clear. Little Zachary would probably still be alive with his grandparents. Even the grandparents said that they thought of ways that they could just steal Zachary and try and escape. Kate and David were like, there's only like three ways to get out by boat, by plane, or I think driving, and all three of those ways, as soon as, you know, the police would be alerted that Zachary was missing, they would be cut off so they wouldn't be able to take him. And even David came forward and said that he wanted to kill Shirley and at least Zachary would be taken care of because he would be at home with Kate. It was just so awful. It was, I really do recommend you guys watch it. It's, it's really good. It's a really good documentary. It's on YouTube, it's free. I really liked it. It's a really sad case. I don't want to say that I liked it, but I thought it was really interesting. 
and David even wrote a book about this. I believe he passed. I'm not sure about Kate, but I believe that David passed. But I know he wrote a book about this, and it's called uh, Dance with the Devil. And uh, I want to read it. And, you know, if you guys decide to read it, let me know. I know this one's a little sad, but thank you guys for watching. I hope you come back. Uh, subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Do whatever. I refuse to zoom you guys in today. Sorry, it's just... Honestly, from the viewfinder, everything's looking a little funky, and I don't want to... I mean, I'm still going to post it. <laughs> okay. Love you guys. Bye!